Hello, I'll be demonstrating how to create a custom linear servo motor file with the Complex 3 C3 Servo Manager software. This can be helpful for machines where linear motor coils aren't in standard orientations and you want to confirm the wiring before enabling the motors and drives, or in existing machines with non-Parker linear motors for machine retrofits and upgrading to the Complex 3. First, let's take a look at using the Parker Trilogy linear servo motors with the Complex 3. Now on our website we do have the application notes that shows how to wire and set up the Trilogy to the Compax 3. And this shows with the motor moving away from the cable exit is the positive direction. Now if I look at the second page it shows both the LME which is the linear magnetic encoder which color code goes to which pin and with the RGH which is the optical encoder which color code goes to which pin. This also shows the hall wiring and the motor phasing. Now this all presumes that the Trilogy motor coil and the encoder read head are both pointed in the same direction with the cable coming out with the positioners that's standard. Now let's say if your encoder read head is pointing the opposite direction you would have to switch both A and A naught. If not, your encoder is going one way, your motor is going the other way and you risk that the motor is going to run away. Obviously that could cause a crash and damage to your mechanics. Let's say that your system isn't the same as the standard. You're not using one of these encoders. You want to check to make sure that the motor phasing is correct before you actually energize the motor. How do you do that? So with the C3 Servo Manager software, if you go into the options RS-232, you can see which COM ports are available. Press OK, and then connect. And then on the bottom you should be able to see RS-232 communications online. If you open up the device selection, go into online device identification and you can double click there. And then you can see that you've established communications. I can see the firmware, re revision of the controller board, etc. So I know I'm talking to the Compax 3. Then I'm going to go into not the drive configuration but go into start C3 motor manager. I can also reach this screen by going from the main screen, the motor icon on the toolbar on the far right. In the C3 Motor Manager on the top left hand corner you see the motor library. Now you can create your own motor library down below, but the predefined motors that Parker's already configured with the C3 Servo Manager are in the motor library. You have both the rotary and then the linear servo motors. So with the linear servo motor. So in the motor manager under linear motors, I'm going to go under Parker US motors. I'm going to locate my motor. Now you'll see the 404, 406, and the 412 LXRs and then you'll start to see the Trilogy coils and at the end of them you'll see a, either LME or RGH indicating whether it's the linear magnetic encoders or the RGH. So if you scroll down and my system happens to be 210-3S 3 is the coil length, the S is in series, it's a 5 micron linear magnetic encoder. Right here we see a summary of this. Now I'm not sure if the direction is going to be the same as a standard so if I right click and use as template it will create a copy of this. This will then appear under user defined motors instead of the Parker US motors. And I, as a user, can name this anything I want. So if I want to name this as my x-axis, and I can change the comment if I want to as well too. Go into uh, next. I'm going to keep everything the same. On a linear motor, the pitch distance is the equivalent of, on a rotary motor, one revolution. It's the distance between a north pole and a north pole. You can also see the motor voltage constant, and this is the back EMF. This is the peak of the sine wave. This is the voltage. If you were to move the coil by hand through the magnets, the mass of the forcer, the stall current, that's the continuous current that the coil can actually handle, the peak current rated percentage of the stall current, uh, the maximum speed, this can be a limit of the bearing or the uh, linear encoder. The LME happens to be rated at 7 meters per second, which is why this is set to 7,000 millimeters per second. The resistance is the line-to-line -line resistance, and the inductance is, is the coil specs. Step three, nothing is used there. Now on the linear servo motors, these are all rated at 230 volts AC. 
the rated force is at 230 volts AC is at the rated speed. So at 4.5 meters per second, you can see that the current draw is 1.8 amps. This is used for the thermal calculation. We're going to keep that the same. Click Next. It's not rated for 480 volts AC, so continue. This is the thermistor that's inside of the motor coil. We use it as a switch, so it opens up, increases greatly in resistance when the motor gets hot. The motor thermals are actually used to calculate and estimate what the winding temperature is of the motor. So the thermal switch is actually a backup protection device to the thermal model. Now with the 24 volts, it's powering up the logic and that it's monitoring what the continuous current going to the motor is and the peak current, how long it's operating. So it's estimating what the winding temperature is and will actually shut down faster than the thermal switch. The thermal switch is waiting on the heat to actually build up within the coil and then the thermistor will open up. So those are typically only reliable if the peak current is around two, two and a half times uh, the continuous current. Anything higher than that, the, the heat will build up in the coil faster than the thermistor will actually respond, which is why it's important to use the thermal model within the amplifier. Click Next. There's no brakes on these. And then on the feedback system, RS422 is a quadrature encoder. Those are compatible with the Compax 3 with F12. Note the encoder resolution is 20 microns. That is actually the pre-quadrature number, which can cause some confusion because all linear encoder manufacturers are going to spec the post-quadrature resolution because it's the better number. So a 5 micron magnetic encoder on the trilogy positioners is actually the post-quadrature. This number here is the pre-quad number. Now with the commutation and the digital hall sensors are being used by default, you can also invert the halls, so it's, instead of looking at them normally open, it's looking at them normally closed, or you can do an automatic commutation with movement, so it's going to ignore the halls, wiggle the motor just slightly when you first energize it, and then determine where the coil is in relation to the magnets. can be okay. Uh, we do recommend using the digital hall sensors for better accuracy. Does the commutation direction have to be inverted? Does the direction of the feedback sensor have to be inverted? What's the commutation angle? These are all pretty hard to calculate, but what you can do is just click automatic setting of commutation parameters, and this will figure it out for you. Note on the commutation selection, if you choose automatic commutation with movement, when you first enable the drive, it will fast blink on the left uh, green LED on the Compax 3, basically wiggling the motor a few degrees to figure out where the coil is. That's not appropriate for applications with very high friction loads, which would be unusual for a linear servo application, or if it's a vertical, or if you have a lot of applied forces that's trying to force the motor uh, coil out of position because when it first enables it's going to be moving the coil and trying to determine that position if that algorithm can't move the coil then it's going to have a hard time figuring out where it is so that's uh, some of the considerations with automatic commutation with movement we'll go ahead and do it with the digital hall effects click automatic setting of commutation parameters now this will uh, download a configuration to the drive so it will erase everything that's within the drive. It will warn you that if you haven't saved uh, you can click no, go back to the main screen in C3 Servo Manager and save the uh, .c3p file. Um, we'll go ahead and download the configuration. Now wherever the motor is right now it will move plus or minus one pitch distance. If you have a limited traverse range, there is an option that will show you on uh, step 2 of 5 with a little checkbox. If you have a very short magnet track length, it can do this with half a pitch distance. If you click the little checkbox, it does take a, a moment to uh, download the configuration. You can see here with a limited traverse ring range as an option. If you hover your mouse up there, it, it explains it's going to move wherever it is, two motor pitches, or wherever it is, plus or minus one pitch distance. Go ahead and click Next. It will move the motor, so uh, be sure everybody's all clear and there's no tooling that could prevent it from uh, moving.
It should have a solid green LED on the Compax 3 and the motor coil should be moving now. And then it's going to ask you which direction do you want it to be positive or negative. I always go away from the cable exit as being the positive direction. Uh, you can uh, select whatever is appropriate on your machine. And then on step 505 it will give you the uh, summary screen of the commutation values of the commutation angle, whether or not it had to invert the halls, and also whether or not it had to invert the uh, feedback sensor based on your wiring. Go ahead and click finish. That'll take you back to step 9 of 9 of the feedback system. It populates this. And then once you've clicked finish, you've actually finished your new under the motor library, under linear motor, if you go under user defined motors, then you can see your x axis motor has been configured, has all the uh, parameters there. So we can go ahead and close out of the motor manager. We're done here. The Compax 3 itself should be a blinking red LED, which means it's not been configured. So we'll go through a configuration now.